What's up, fam? Happy Wednesday, everybody. Happy Whoa, well, That's Good Wednesday, if I will. This is the last episode of the year. And like we've done the past few years, we are gonna recap the best piece of advice we've gotten all year. Uh, but before we do that, I just wanna give a huge thank you to all of you amazing podcast listeners. This year has truly blown my mind with how many of you have been listening to Whoa, well, That's Good and been encouraged by it. Um, some of my favorite compliments this year have been just when I'm out and about and the different states that I've traveled to to speak at when people come up to me and say, Sadie, I listen to your podcast every morning before school, or me and my daughter listen to it every night together before bed, and just so many different um, things that y'all have said this year that have meant so much and kept um, this podcast alive and going and uh, thriving, honestly, more than ever. We're over five years um, in now, which is crazy. I've known this for five years, and I truly feel in some ways that we're just getting started. It's um, my favorite thing to do, and so I'm so grateful for all of y'all making it happen. Um, like I mentioned, one of my favorite comments was from a mom this year who said that her and her high school, or I think middle school daughter, listen to the podcast every night together because it just helps them have great conversations and in-depth conversations about their faith. So that was so cool. I've had so many college students come up and say they listened to it before class, high school students, and then beyond. I had so many moms listening in this year, um, dads, boyfriends, family. I mean, it really has just reached so many different people. But I wanted to read this one letter from a grandma that I got that I just thought was so powerful because uh, we've also had um, really just all ages listen this year, but I thought this was really cool. So she sends me her book that she wrote, which was amazing because she wrote this book um, after listening to the podcast so much, she was inspired to do something that God called her to do, which is write a book. Um, so she says that she listens to, I'm gonna pick up just in the middle of the note, but she said she listened to my entire podcast at least three times, and she just started over at episode one, which first of all, that is wild. So thank you for doing that. Um, Recently, you know, the Spotify things just came out and some of you guys in that top 0.1% people, shout out to y'all, that was amazing. But she goes on to say, maybe someday we can meet and I can tell you the story of how I found encouragement to turn off true crime podcasting and turn um, tune in your podcast. In the meantime, there is a small snippet and shout out to your podcast in my new book. And then she says, I want you to have a copy because I found encouragement um, and your obedience that positioned my heart to hear God's call of my own. It was in it was your words and the words of your guests that spurred me on when the enemy told me how insignificant I was and how this book wouldn't even make a difference. I want to extend a thank you to you. She goes on to say all this stuff. And I think, thank you, Christian, for that golf clap. Uh, Christian and Jolly are here today, which I'm going to get to them in just a second. Yeah, yeah. But I just really wanted to say thank you. I mean, um, the hope for these podcasts, I pray before every single episode that, you know, you would hear this episode exactly when you need to, that it would fall on your life at the perfect timing, that it would feel like a God moment, that it would be an answer to your prayers. And maybe some you didn't even know you were praying. And so to see that someone heard the podcast and took the words of advice and really started listening living it is the goal. Um, a couple little fun goals we had this year. So at the beginning of the year, we were like, okay, how many downloads do we want to hit each month? And last year we had hit like 1.8 million or something in a month, which was insane. And I'm beyond grateful for that. And so I was like, well, let's just make a goal to hit 2 million downloads in a month for uh, the year 2023. And my team was like, you should do 2.1. Come on, push yourself. I was like, oh my gosh, 2.1, that just seems crazy. And so we wrote it down on paper, 2.1 million goals. That's like um, 2.1 million downloads. That would be like a goal. And then by March, I think we hit 2.6 or something. At some point this year, we hit 2.6 and it was pretty early on. 2.1 was hit in March. I think later on we hit 2.5 or 2.6 million downloads in a month. And so y'all really have just blown my mind. It's crazy um, and I love it. So thank y'all. Okay, now I'm going to welcome my two incredible guests on the show. We have John Luke, my brother. What's up? Woo, woo, woo. And we have Christian, my hubby. Cheers. And because John Luke is on, we have incredible coffee. Um, John Luke, tell us a little bit about the coffee we're drinking because this stuff is like, whoa, that is good. So this is New Blend. I'm roasting coffee. That's what I do now. And this is our Duck Commander coffee that will come out next year in uh, January. Uh, I specifically made this with uh, with my family in mind, particularly my dad and grandfather. So like this is like the strong stuff. 
perfect for a coffee maker that you can have in the morning, perfect for duck hunts, and we all like it too. It's good in a latte as well. It's so good. It's great in a latte. I'm drinking straight black. Yeah. It's delicious. You're drinking it with some Are little- Are you really drinking straight black? Yes, I am. Wow. Is that a boo? I always drink black coffee. Yeah, throw back to our first date when you were like, yeah, um, I always drink black coffee and then we went to the coffee shop and you ordered a caramel frappuccino and you said, I only when order I, this When one. I travel, I splurge. But when I'm local, <laughs> I drink black coffee. No, this is Christian. When he goes to a coffee shop, he always orders a honey oat milk latte. You used to order caramel frappuccino. Yeah. But when you're at home, you order order you make a black coffee if i were to go to the coffee shop right now i would get a black coffee 100 percent, you would not you would get if, an oat milk honey latte not here locally are you serious yesterday are you serious yesterday <laughs> you just said are you serious are you serious yesterday at the coffee shop i didn't get anything yesterday no but the coffee you shop. said i'm gonna get a honey oat milk because latte. i've never been there i was gonna try it to see if it was good because you were raving about it and i was like okay well this is the standard if this is really good the standard no pun intended we have a, we have a coffee shop local called the standard if this was not <laughs> standard i was saying like this is the bar if you make a good honey iced oat milk latte then you, to me you're a good coffee shop but if you can't then it's like <laughs> So all that to, to say, all coffee shops out there, that you got to perfect that's that. The standard. If you that's want true. our business, that's true. you've got to make. Yeah, no, it is true. Thank yeah. you. Because if you get me one, and yeah. it's like all the honey's just at the bottom, come to the bottom. It's yep. It's not good. Well, how do you avoid that happening? You got to mix it in with the espresso. You got to mix it in first. Thank yeah. Thank you. That's how I do it at the house. Yeah. You just help some baristas out there. They're like, oh. Or you right could right just on. heat up the honey and then pour it in there. Yeah. Another. Uh, you can't really do that at the coffee shop. You got to mix it in with the espresso, but it's also like the milk to the milk to ice to espresso ratio. All that to thing. say, I'm drinking it black and it is very, very good. Well, I'm not drinking it black. I'm drinking it with oat milk, honey and cinnamon and it's delicious. And I actually do like strong coffee because I like to put some sweet stuff in it. And then I don't like it to not taste like coffee after I put my sweet stuff in it. So I like the strong stuff and it is absolutely delicious. And whenever I just said it's boy that's good coffee, that just made me think we should make a boy that's good coffee. Wait, what? Wait, what? You heard it here first. You heard it here first. If we make a boy that's good coffee, would you drink it? Comment below. And what would you want it to be like? What kind of blend would you want? Would right. you want like a light blend? Medium or I can dark just go ahead and tell you it's not gonna be light, friends. It's where not would you want light. the where would you want the bean from? That's the yeah, big there thing. we go. Oh yeah, John was telling me about some like honey honey beans or something. Yeah, we're getting yeah. It's not for what it's good. Sorry, fam. That's it's already another, taken. It's for another one, but it's a honey Costa Rica. Ooh. Ooh. All right. Well, we, we could talk about coffee for a while. John Luke is roasting coffee. It's incredible. Can't wait for y'all to try it. Y'all definitely need to try the duck commander kind. And then maybe we'll make a well that's good one, which would be so fun. All right. We are going to go through the best piece of advice that we've gotten this year. Honestly, we've gotten so much good advice. I'm sure you both listen to every one of the podcasts. Including yep. the Sisters and Friends. Uh -huh. Right? Yep. Okay. Yep. So Out of those 2.6 million downloads, I definitely contributed to at least one of them. <laughs> at least one. I'll at least take one. It. Hey, at least you listen to one. Was it yeah. the one that? Well, I got to support. Yeah. You might and not how many of the 2.6 would be attributed to me? Do you mean like you brought them there to listen or you listened to my podcast? I'm saying, well, both. You were totally talking about you got no, them there. I attributed yeah. to a lot of the listens. No, it, it, it's, 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 it's. I just listened to the one Christian's on. It's so. twofold. <laughs> Thank you. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, how, how, how many of those people are like, oh, Christian, I'm going to listen. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's double about. folded. I attributed to probably 50 of the 2.6, which is. Wow. That's actually really wow. good. Thank you. It's really good. And I probably partook. People probably listened because I was on. <laughs> that's a good confidence, babe. So, I like I'm to sure think, they did. I like to think I helped you get it. I'm sure they did. But guess who's the biggest podcast of the year was? Guess who? My dad. Dad. Dad was the biggest podcast of the year. Yeah, which, you know, that was a really great podcast. If you it was really listen, good. Go you kind of had some like. It was a clickbait title. It was, <laughs> but it was true. It was true. The side of the Robertson family, people don't know, was what it we talked very about. True. Um, and then that one, and then I think our Haven's name story was the second, and then the podcast with mom, a messy conversation, one of them. 
So great podcast this year. All right. So we're going to go through the best piece of advice. Now, honestly, when I was going through all the best piece of advice that people gave, I could literally shout out every single person because there really wasn't there obviously wasn't really bad advice, which throwback to the early listeners who listened to Well, That's Good before, um, like, I guess John Luke's lying. I did. I did. His lie. Okay. Back I in the day. I was in the first season. Okay. In the first season, yeah. if who's y'all the, remember. Who's the first Well, That's Good guest ever? Okay, I don't know that. Bob, Bob Goff. Goff. Oh, there you go. We started very strong. With all of the fun of the holiday seasons comes all of the good desserts. And look, I cannot pass up a cookie. It is just hard to do. And so with that being said, I got to stay healthy somehow. And if you follow Christian and I, if you've been following us for any period of time, you probably heard us talk about AG1. We love AG1. It is a great way to stay healthy each and every day, making sure we're getting good things into our body, even if we have a, a cookie here or there, which we definitely will. But we love drinking AG1. It has truly um, been such a huge help for me. The first day I drank AG1, I immediately noticed a difference in my energy and my focus. I appreciate, you know, a cup of coffee, but sometimes coffee can make me jittery and kind of just like um, not feeling my best. But AG1 gives me healthy energy and I feel so focused throughout my day. And um, that's because AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement that supports your body's universal needs like gut optimization, stress management, and immune support, which is also great for the holiday season. Since 2010, AG1 has led the few of foundational nutrition continuously refining their formula to create a smarter better way to elevate your baseline health i'm super thankful for ag1 because not only uh, did i get it to replace my daily multivitamins but every scoop of ag1 also includes prebiotics probiotics and digestion enzymes to support my gut health uh, which is so awesome and if i don't have it in my day i truly do miss it it's a great thing to do every single day and i actually really like the taste of it christian and i recommend ag1 to just about everyone i just feel like it's it's truly the easiest way to be healthy and live a healthy lifestyle, and it really just makes you feel so much better. AG1 is super simple. It's just one scoop of vitamins, minerals, and probiotics, and it has uh, tons of other high-quality ingredients in it. So we've gotten tons of people hooked on it, loving it as well, which has been kind of fun to see. I actually had two of my best friends, Lady and Clayton. Some of y'all know them from the podcast, and Clayton was like, okay, for real, do y'all really drink it every day? And I'm like, yes, I love it. It helps me feel so much better better. Um, one of my good friends, Kaylee, uh, who's on Ella Worship, she drinks it. I mean, truly, we have gotten the people loving AG1. Christian especially loves how easy it is to travel with. Um, me too. We travel all the time and it's so hard to stay healthy on the road. So it's nice to just throw in a couple of travel packs and know that we're getting our daily uh, vitamins wherever we are. AG1 is a supplement I trust to provide the support my body needs daily and that is why we've been partners with them for so long. So if you want to take ownership of your health, it can start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Just go to drinkag1.com slash woe. Again, that's drinkag1.com slash woe to check it out today. So the first season of Well, That's Good, it was a lot shorter. We did like 20-minute episodes, and... Um, Every time at the end of the podcast, I would call mom and I would say, is this good advice or bad advice? So we'd say, well, that's good or well, that's bad. And it was advice that I would get from Instagram. Like people would send in bad advice that they've gotten or good advice, which was kind of like a fun thing. So today we're going to go through this advice. Nobody gave bad advice. We don't do that anymore, even though that was pretty funny and we made sure bring it back. What? What percentage would you say? That to these people, it's good advice, but to somebody listening, they're like, I actually don't agree with that. Well, I don't know. That's what we're going to go through. That's what and we're maybe gonna, that's we're why dig. we brought John Luke on. I don't know. Because this just is a, perspective. Yeah, like, you could be like, you know, that could be heard wrong, you know, or this is what I think. So, you know, let's just I pull like it, it out. Let's dig into it. Okay. So, this one was so good. And I I love this episode. This is actually also one of our top 10 biggest episodes of last year and it, this year. It was Nick Vujicic. So, you know, Nick, who that is, he's incredible. His story is amazing. And that dude got on this podcast and he just preached the gospel. Um, but I love, this was not, not actually his best piece of advice he gave. It's just a quote that he said that was so good. And he said, if I don't get a miracle, I can still be one. That's good. Whoa, mm. that's good. That's See, good. I like that because me and uh, my friend Grace were talking about this yesterday, actually. She's pregnant. 
And she was talking about how, like, she's believing for a miracle for her dad because he's sick right now and it's really sad. And she was like, but I also am, like, I can't overlook the fact that even though if, like, God doesn't do a miracle in his life, God's literally doing a miracle in mine right now, the fact that I have a baby inside of me. Mm -hmm. So it's like sometimes we overlook the miracles that we have right in front of us and the fact that, like, we're alive or Mm -hmm. that our brains work the way that they do or that we can, you know, y'all can't, but I can have a baby grow inside of me. And, like, now those babies are honey and haven. You know, If I did, that would be a miracle. That would be a miracle and quite strange. But, like, isn't that so cool? Like, it's crazy. We overlook these things. So I really love that. Any thoughts on that one? Yeah, I kind of took it a different way of, like, I think that we think we're, like, ask God to do stuff for us. Mm -hmm. And every, how many people are asking God to do stuff for them? Like, mm-hmm. you know, so many people around you are, and God often works through people, mm-hmm. which means that most of the time we are going to be the thing that God is acting for someone else. Mm, that's good. Like yeah, I, that's that was so how true. I took it too. Ah, oh, thank you. I really did. Really? Yeah, but like the idea of, you know, like don't, like, like, but about blessing, like uh-huh. be a blessing to other people. Maybe right. you haven't received a blessing or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, it's like. You could be someone's miracle. You, you could be someone's miracle. I mean, just like if someone at the grocery store was like, I would, I need a hundred dollars. And then you walk in and give them cash back. Like, well, it's like two papa's story yesterday. Where, did y'all hear that last night when two papa mm-hmm. was sharing that story? Um, where, so our grandpa, he's been on the show before, but he was basically saying that he had felt on his heart for a long time to give this person money to pay for their school. And um, he was like, okay, like he just kind of thought about it. Like he was pondering it. And then the next day he shows up to um, do something at um, kind of a random place. He was doing something random there. But the the point of it was the person was late to get there that he was meeting with. He was like 40 minutes waiting in the car and he could have been like, this is ridiculous. It's been 40 minutes. But while he was waiting, the girl he had been thinking about to pay for her school walks out and like not expecting her to be there. This is so random that she's even there. And he's like, okay. And she was on the phone. He was like, okay, if she sits in her car for a while, then I'll go up and I'll talk to her. But if if not, then I'll just like wait to another time. Well, she sits in her car. So he gets out and he's like, hey. And um, he goes, she mentions the fact that she didn't have um, money to go to school yet, but she's like waiting. So like she mentions the very thing he's been thinking about. And then he's like, actually, God put you on my heart to give you the money to go to school. And she just started bawling because she said this morning I prayed to God and I said God I I need a breakthrough in this area if you want me to go to school and if you want me to do this and you're gonna have to provide and then that day Tupapa shows up somewhere random to meet with a guy who didn't show up for his meeting and that lady walks out of the store right beside it and he was able to pay for her college the day she prayed so to your point that's so true see that's that's yeah that's well that's good like yeah Mm -hmm. sometimes a negative Sometimes the negative thing that happened to you might be the blessing that's happening for someone else. Boom. Whoa. Your boy could have heard that one. Yeah. Your boy could have heard that one. You just take that. <laughs> take that and soak that in. That's so good. Don't, that's going to be on our best piece of advice next year. That, that was a boy, that's a good moment. Good, but that we'll talk about it next We're going to extrapolate that one moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. Okay, moving on. Um, again, I I hate to even bypass the ones I'm bypassing. Um, Jason and Lauren Kennedy's was one of the biggest podcasts of the year as well. It was incredible. Theirs was kind of, um, their podcast was one of those that their advice was really good, but it was really just hearing their story that was so inspiring. And Mm -hmm. actually Savannah Chrisley was just on and she was talking about um, taking the advice from Sarah Blakely's life. And she was like, it's not really anything she said. It's just the way that she lives, you know? And I think that that is a good point that sometimes it's not necessarily what someone said. That's like, that is what I took, but it's what someone did or the, the story that you heard, which makes me think of yesterday. We were talking about all the books we read this year and um, I came in at a whopping eight, which was really good for me. But, you know, the books were shorter. John Luke came in at what? 36, 36, 36 books. And his books are like, a thousand pages long so John Luke's always been that way in elementary school I could not get my AR points to save my life and John Luke was literally on the wall at our library for getting the I most points in elementary points. school so we've always been opposite in that um, aspect but talk about what you were saying like the books that you read it's not necessarily like oh you got this advice but you like learn from the story itself 
Yeah. Well, I was talking about like what I said about the Wing Feather book mm-hmm. series. So like I read I, I read a lot of fiction books. And so these are mostly like fantasy genre books. And one thing that I learned this year from the series, the Wing Feather Saga, was it wasn't really how like anything that happened in the book, but it was how he wrote it and how creative he was in creating this world and crafting the story about very serious topics like war and crime and rebellion, all these things and children and how adults and children interact. But he crafted in the story that a 10 year old would read it and absolutely love. And it, it really pushed me to think more creatively about life and how I tell stories and like, oh, it's actually possible to, to, it's to tell a story, to teach a lesson and a much more creative way that all ages can mm-hmm. listen to. That's good. Oh, That's speaking kinda, of good advice, John Mark Comer. That was just about to say that. On the podcast, um, like wavelength which there. is actually not out yet. I've teased this twice now because it was so good. So get ready for that one, mid-January. But he said, um, the Bible is simple. The story of the Bible is simple enough for a child to understand it, but complex enough for someone to study their entire life. Yep. So true. Yeah. And so to that point of, yes, like pushing yourself to to – to even share things for me, it's like I want to share messages that, yes, uh, you know, a middle schooler can hear it and understand and be impacted, but also a grandma can hear it and be like, "This changed my life," which right. I think well, that's good is doing in a lot of ways. Um, and so I love that. I love that advice. And if you are a fiction reader, or not even just a fiction reader, just you like reading in general, um, John Link's Instagram. You have been owning this like new Instagram, which is so cool because. What I love about it is it's just you, you know, mm-hmm. and I think like, I don't know why you didn't do Instagram a lot before, but do you feel like you didn't do it because you didn't care about it and now you just are passionate about things? But what what brought you back to the gram in such a um, like full on way? Yeah, it's kind of a complicated question. I mean, I think I just didn't really care about it as much. There wasn't there wasn't as much in my life that I was like excited about to share at the time. Um, and I, did, I, I guess I had this like fear of like, like I'll put it this way. This is maybe going off topic, but I feel like I'm the, what I was on Duck Dynasty at the time. So like 10 to 15 years ago and who my family kind of was, was not exactly who I am now. Like I feel like I'm a totally different person 28 year, John, 28 year old John Luke is totally different than 18 year old John Luke, as I should be. Yeah. You know, I mean, if I was still 18 year old John Luke, it, it would be concerning. <laughs> right. And so on Instagram, specifically, the people following me, I had this feeling of like, well, they followed 18 year old John Luke. They're not going to care what 28 year old John Luke yeah. is doing. Mm-hmm. And I kind of had to get over that fear of like owning who I am now versus like comparing myself now to who I was then of like, mm-hmm. I'm a new person. I'm into new things. I'm very excited about this. Yeah. I like stories. I like books. I like coffee. And like, that's the thing I'm going to share. Dang. That's actually so good. And it's it really itself good. is really good advice because I think that a lot of people feel that way, even, like whether they're famous or not, of just like, man, I don't know how to fully be myself in this setting because people know me for who I was and not who I am. And what if they don't like me for who I am now because they expect right. who I was? Mm-hmm. Or what if they don't like me for who I was, but I'm not that person anymore. And I, right. I, they would love who I am now. I've grown. I'm, I'm not the same as I used to be. I think that's a tension that everybody walks in at some point in their life, and particularly at this age, right. because we all were different than we were at 18, as mm-hmm. we should be. Right. Y'all, getting sleep can be few and far between right now with a two and a half year old and a six month old. Oh, the struggle is real. And let me tell you, a good night's sleep makes all the difference. I can tell if I had a good night's sleep or if I didn't. And Hatch Restore is here to help you get the best sleep of your life. Sign me up for anything that says that. It's a device that helps you form consistent, healthy bedtime and morning routines so that you can have the rest you need to be your best self. Hatch uses uh, gentle sound and light cues 
to teach your body when it's time to sleep and when it's time to wake up. It's actually super cool how it does this. You can set up your uh, bedtime routine to include meditation, sleep sounds, or gentle entertainment to take your mind off of your worries and ready to sleep. In the morning, Hatch will softly wake you up with a sunrise alarm that includes a gentle light and your personalized alarm sounds um, a few minutes after that, which is actually really cool. I didn't think I was going to like that at first because I'm like, you don't want to wake up before the alarm, but it actually just helps you wake up so much nicer than just a blasting alarm out of nowhere. Our entire family loves the pink noise and the sunrise alarm really helps us to just wake up more naturally. And Hatch is always um, releasing new content on Hatch Plus. They have uh, seasonal content out. They have all these different, um, you know, options that you can listen to, stories you can listen to, which is so great because I I love telling Honey a story to go to sleep at night, but I also like listening to stories to go to sleep at night because my mind will just start racing whenever I lay in bed. So to hear something else and get lost in it, it's so nice. Uh, great sleep can be learned with Hatch. 83% of customers report improved sleep after trying this and they have a 60 night money back guarantee. So you can try it risk-free, see if you like it and um, turn it in if you don't. But hey, I strongly think that you're going to like this because we love ours. Like I said, we love the pink noise. The sunrise alarm was something that we thought was super, super cool. Um, like I said, it just kind of helps you wake up a little bit more naturally. And it always is kind of nice when you do wake up before your alarm because I feel proud of myself. I'm like, hey, I just did that. I feel so mature. Hatch is offering my listeners $20 off your purchase of the Hatch Restore and free shipping at hatch.co slash woe. That's hatch.co slash woe to get $20 off and free shipping. Hatch.co slash woe. I think everyone walk. Well, you got stages. So you have like middle school, high school, college job. You know, so I think everyone walks through that of like high school. Like this is what I posted in high school. Then you get to college and people are like, that was this weird, dumb thing to post. But it's like, but that's who I was when I was 14, you know? Mm-hmm. And then you get to college and then you get a job. And then it's like, yeah, all the dynamics shift. And it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I didn't post that much then. So it's like, you could literally do two clicks and you could see what I posted in like 2013. Mm-hmm. It's like, that was a weird thing for a 13 year old to say. But it's like, <laughs> well, that's how everybody was roasting me for my Man Crush Mondays. You're like, you were too old for that. You were 15. I'm like, okay, but at the time, 15 year olds did do that. We yeah. were cheesy. Now, 15 year olds are very cool and they Which do Me cool and Jacob TikToks. were talking about this the other night. Yeah. Do you remember back when people used to do like, like my post for TVH? <laughs> yeah, I did that. I did that. Oh, stuff. I totally did that. Uh, yeah. Funny. Or like oh. SFS, shout out for shout out. Yeah. It was like, follow my boy Jacob. <laughs> like 50 followers <laughs> yeah oh, so yeah. funny i think just to, to bring it to this i'm i'm talking about instagram but i think people mostly feel that because i did too whenever they like go off to college and, they come and back. then they come back that's so true or whatever they leave their family or space for a time period and they come back yep. and then it's like everyone wants you to go back to who you were but you're trying to like express who you are now that is so true i i truly do like on my facebook where it says like oh you posted this 10 years ago i just cringe because oh. i'm like why did i post that that's so dumb or i'm like actually embarrassed that i was that way you know because there are things that that facebook shows me that i was that i didn't recognize in myself at the time mm-hmm. like when Duck Dynasty happened and everything, I was like, I didn't change. I didn't change. You know, like, why did my friends um, think I did? But then I read some of my posts and I'm like, that's why they thought I did. Because that was a dumb thing to say. You know, like, mm-hmm. why did I, I didn't need to post that and share that. Like, that was um, maybe trying to show off or maybe trying to prove something that I wasn't or whatever it was. And you can hindsight look back and go like, now I can see I have a little more perspective and I'm like embarrassed by that. But then you got to give yourself the grace to grow and to learn. And I think that's so true. Like some sometimes I think about this being back here when I run into people in high school, like I hope they don't still see me and hold me to who I was and I don't need to hold them to who they were because we are we could be such different friends now. We're in such different scenarios and, and scenes now. And so this is a really great well, funny, I'll, I'll share a quick funny story. Not funny at the time because it made me very upset and insecure. But it was our, so like when I was in high school, I we were we went to the Bahamas on this trip and I posted a photo of me like with like sharks, like kind of posing with like sharks. That was a really cool photo. And when I got, <laughs> when I got to college, um, like when I, when I got to college, I was in a fraternity and like the first week, like all the fraternities had to like go in this like big auditorium room. We had like a guest speaker kind of talk about like, 
you know, the roles of it, the importance of it, like how to, you know, what not to do, all that kind of stuff. And all these other fraternities were calling me Shark Boy. And it made me oh, so, no. ups- I, I was like, I was like, I was so insecure. <laughs> I was so sad. <laughs> And, but it wasn't even guys I was friends with. They were just calling me Shark Boy. <laughs> you never told me that. I just thought about it because I was like, that actually really upset me. Are you crying? No, I'm crying laughing. I'm crying laughing. <laughs> Tears are being shed over Shark Boy. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. But you're you're going to be Shark but Boy. But they were calling me Shark now. Boy because at the time my hair was, I was like, maybe they're calling because like my hair was spiky. Yeah. Like, you know, Taylor Lautner from Shark Boy. Oh, no. Uh, but no, it was oh. because I posted a picture with sharks and they like roasted me. <laughs> it's a good Shark Boy. I'm sure it was a great picture. I'm sure it was really cool. Well, it's, it's still on my Instagram. It yeah. is? Yeah, I didn't delete it. Oh, we're going to have to pull uh, up Shark everyone Boy. Go, everyone go like everyone and go comment. Check out Shark Boy. Everyone go like and comment. You've had two moments like that in your life. Molly. Okay, well, on, why are you bringing that up? <laughs> okay, Shark Boy is really cool, though. Shark Boy is way Thank cooler you. than Molly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think you've shared about Molly on the podcast before. I don't think so. Molly, yeah. just real quick, this is not in any way interesting. <laughs> Molly, I was in sixth grade, and we were going to play a state championship, or we were going to play a tournament uh, for baseball, and all the other kids on my team shaved their heads, so I was like, I'll go do it. So we were literally on the interstate, pulled over this, like, super cuts or something, and I shaved my head. And turns out I had moles all over my head. <laughs> and obviously in middle school, you can't wear hats. So I had, yeah, you know, I got called moly. So I've never shaved my head since then. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry, this. this is in no way interesting at all. That was pretty interesting. Okay. Well, well, it was fine in baseball because I could wear a hat. But obviously, you know how small my head is, so my hat didn't fit. Yeah. Because like I you shaved need all my your head. hair. To make I shaved. Your hat yeah. Fit. I sh- well, I have like the smallest head ever, and I shaved all my head. I shaved all my hair off, and my hat didn't fit. That is sad. So, On a total different note, let's go to the next piece of advice. Okay. okay. Um, love this piece of advice, Katie Davis Majors, the girl uh-huh. who went to Uganda. Kisses from Katie. Mm -hmm. You heard? Okay. So she said, um, a young life leader asked or said, I'm sorry. She asked the young life leader, how am I going to know what God wants me to do? Common question asked by most people. And then they responded, God is so much more concerned with who you are going to be than what you are going to do. Just focus on who you are going. Sorry, I keep saying that with the wrong emphasis. (laughs) Just focus on who you're going to be. Um, and then he will like share with you what you're going to do or it'll just happen. Basically is what she was saying. And I love that because so I, I'm still laughing over Molly because I'm looking at y'all and you're still have tears in your eyes. Okay. Sorry. I love that piece of advice because that's so true. So many people stress out about like what they're going to do, what they're going to do. And I really do think that God is like that verse that we talk about, whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Um, So it really is a kind of whatever you do, but more so like, who are you going to be? Which we were just talking about going through all the Bible project videos. And um, it's just, you know, sad that Israel just, they just kept turning on God time after time, after time, after time. And then, you know, there's that verse, I think it's in Micah and it talks about, um, you know, walk humbly, love justice, love mercy, walk humbly with your God. Mm -hmm. And um, basically the context of him saying that was y'all are worshiping, y'all are acting like you're worshiping, but you're not living like you're worshiping. So therefore your rituals and your worship doesn't mean anything to God because you're not living like it. Um, And they said, if you really are gonna love God, if you really are going to worship God, then you would, you know, walk humbly. You would love mercy. You would this is the way that you would be living. I think that's so good. And I think sometimes we concern ourselves so much with like what we're going to do and overthink it. And then we're not actually just being the people that God has called us to be. But if you focus on who you are, and then I think what you do would just kind of flow naturally from that. I think it's a, a back to your Instagram. Yeah. When you started focusing on like who you are, what you do on Instagram, what you share, naturally begin to flow because you love coffee, you love making it, so that's what you're doing. You love reading. Um, now you're helping people find books that they should read and coffee that they should try, and like that was all coming off of like who you are and what you're passionate about. But it's it's hard if you try to like flip that order and you try to figure out what you're gonna do first, right? Because then I think it also you might be confused on who you even are in the process, you know. Yeah. Any thoughts? 
All right, let's move on. Wait, I do have a thought on that. Sure. Okay, so just thinking, like, that just makes me think about most, we, I think, think about a lot, like, what does God want me to do, Mm -hmm. right? But when you look at the Bible and the people in it, most of them, God told them to do, like, one thing. And they were, like, 30 years old or 80 years old or whatever, which means that, like, I do think God has something specific plan for all of us in each individual one of us but that might be like one one thing thing. yeah and that means there's a ton of time that you just have to like live and be faithful and just in every moment just do the things that you know god is telling you to do that's patience kindness goodness self-control like all of that is like building Y'all, my holiday shopping technique is a little sporadic. I'm not going to lie. It can be a little crazy, but I do keep a note on my phone of all the people and all the gifts I want to get them. And um, But sometimes I am last minute when I finally full send. So if you're that person and you're a last minute type of shopper, then I got you covered right now because Aura Frames is an incredible gift. It's the perfect gift for whoever you like to share memories and moments with, like your mom, your dad, grandparents, siblings, or best friends, or even we keep it in our office for all of our teammates. And it's so so much fun. Aura frames were named the number one digital frame by Wirecutter, the strategist in Wire magazine. You can actually give it to your loved ones, preloaded with your favorite pics and memories to share. After that, you can use the Aura app to upload more photos whenever you want, and you can even invite friends and family to share their favorites too from wherever they are. It's super easy to use, so even your grandparents can enjoy uh, looking through all the photos and even adding their own if they want. So you can save yourself the hassle of last minute shopping and get them an aura frame instead because it's so easy um, it actually comes in a premium gift box so if you need to save time and money on wrapping paper it's got you covered that is definitely a game changer it's always hard to buy for people that feel like you know they kind of have everything like how do you get your grandparents something you know special that they're gonna love when they have so many great things and aura frames is such a great gift I, I shouldn't even say this because I know my grandparents listen to this podcast but I definitely want to get them an aura frame this year I actually am getting them an aura frame don't tell them because I just love um, that they love seeing pictures of my girls and I'm always sending them pictures anyways but I think it would be so fun for uh, my grandparents to just have this frame in their office and get to see pictures of the girls sent to them every single day so again to mama to papa if you're listening to this Merry Christmas uh, you'll be getting that later but you can do this for your family members too you can give the best gift ever this holiday season by visiting auraframes.com slash woe today and get $30 off their best selling frames. These frames sell out super fast, so make sure that you go ahead and get yours now before they're gone. That's A-U-R-A frames.com slash woe and use the promo code woe and you can get $30 off their best selling frames. Terms and conditions apply. Go check it out today. That is such a good point. And the one thing might not be as specific as you think it is. Like mm-hmm. like you just said, like right. patience, goodness, so all those things are things that you should do. But the one thing, like for instance, um, I feel like the one thing that God called me to do was when I was 17 years old and I was asking the Lord, what are you calling me to do? Right. And I really felt like the Lord spoke to my heart. It was like imprinted on my heart be a good sister and a friend to those who don't have one. Mm -hmm. And that really is like specifically the one thing I feel like the Lord has said. Mm -hmm. Now, what that's led me to do is start a podcast Mm -hmm. because that's how I can reach people is to be a good sister and friend to those who don't have one. How am I going to do that? Start a podcast. Uh, We'll start blogging. When blogging was thing, we actually still do our blog because that was the thing we started with. Um, Instagram, I can do that through social media. I can do that through YouTube. And so that one thing that was kind of this broad, like, this is what I'm calling you to do, led me to the more specific things. Mm -hmm. But I don't think necessarily God said, like, start a podcast. Right. Um, You know, I think, yes, he, like, led me to do that. And I'm doing it and being faithful to that. Um, But I think that sometimes if we get so specific with, like, what it is, then sometimes we can feel like we're failing when we're not doing that thing, but maybe it's outside of your control to do that thing. Right. So if you think like God called me to like speak to the nations, um, well, then you might be like, well, and God does call people to speak to the nations. I'm not saying he doesn't, but if it's like not, if it's not tangible and he doesn't 
you know, create the way to do that, right. then you might be like, God, you said this, you said this, why aren't you doing it? But I think if God calls you to it, he really does like send you there. He will equip yeah. you for it. Right. That makes sense. I yeah. think sometimes we get so specific and thinking like, it has to be this one way that I'm going to speak to the nations and it has to be like thousands and thousands and thousands of people or whatever, when it might just be like, no, like go to the nations and speak to the villages, speak to the people. Like it's more broad than like a specific platform or a specific outlet or a job title because i think if it's able to be taken away then it might not be necessarily your calling i was gonna say yeah you could look at that as a job and then you get fired and then it's like then you're like am i not doing my calling or yeah or you feel like yeah one thing i thought of is like writing a book because we're talking about books here like when you write a book especially like a non-fiction book you there is a lot of time of not writing the book that you need to write the book so true. Like, like the book I wrote, you know, whenever I was young, the first book I came out with, it was about six years of knowledge, like packed into that one thing. And in books we write now, like, it's a lot of time of, of not thinking I'm doing this to write this book, but of researching and studying of just things that we're naturally interested so in true. that then all come together at some point to be a book so true, or to be something, mm-hmm. you know? And that's so like, when you think like, I need to write a book. Well, that's, that will be a natural outflowing of all the things you've already been living so for the true. past 10 years mm-hmm. of you not thinking about writing the book. That's so true. Someone just said to me recently, they were, they have a great job, just started the job. And they said, oh, well, you know, sometimes I just look around and I'm like, I should be writing a book. I should be doing a podcast. I should be because I look at other people my age and like they're doing stuff like that. And I was like, friend, let me just tell you from personal experience, like this that you're doing right now might one day be what you talk about on the podcast, might be what you one day write in the book. But it's the worst feeling ever to to start writing a book and have no words to say. It's like the SpongeBob moment when you're sitting there for hours and hours and hours and you get the because you didn't live the life yet, you know, or you um, want to start a podcast, but you don't have a concept yet. You don't have, you know, I think the best thing that's good has been that it, it hasn't felt like work in so many ways. It hasn't got tired. I'm so, I still love it because it was just like an natural thing I, I love asking people what like their best piece of advice i do that in life you you've seen me with different people that we've been around i'm like give me the best piece of marriage advice give me the best piece of life advice and and so i love doing that i love seeking that and that's the thing that i'll i think i'll forever love i don't know if it'll forever look like a podcast you know that would be kind of crazy but for right now it does and then i can go on to continue to do that in other ways and other forms so i think really what i meant by the beginning of this is like God will call you to stuff, yes. And it might be a broad thing like speak to the nations. It might be a broad thing like sister and friend. It might be a broad thing like this or that. But I think be careful about thinking that it's like a, unless you really feel like it, it's like a specific mm-hmm. like format or a specific job title or sort of the thing. Because, you know, I remember um, in 2020, we had all of these plans that year mm. and I was so overwhelmed at the beginning of the year. How are we going to do all really these things? To. We felt very called to those things. Mm-hmm. I really felt like God said we were supposed to go to London. We were supposed to do all this stuff. And then COVID hit and we literally could not get to London, like not an option. And I felt like wrestling with the Lord, like, God, I thought you said go to London. I thought you called me to that. And I felt the Lord um, just kind of speak to me in this moment. Again, when I say speak to me, I don't hear audibly, but it's like one of those, you couldn't tell me he didn't say it. Like it felt so real, you know? And I felt like the Lord said, just because, you know, um, the the location's different, just because the calling's different and I'm botching it exactly how I heard it. But it was, he was basically saying that doesn't mean that the prayers have to change. That doesn't mean your heart towards it has to change. Like do what you're going to do there where you're at, you know? Um, And so I think that that was like a good lesson for me that just because I didn't get the opportunity doesn't mean that the call changes, doesn't mean that the heart of it changes, that you're still going to preach in the word, you're still um, being faithful where you're at. And so that was just, that's what I mean by that because you could get super specific and then COVID hits and you're like, God, what the world? But then he's like, hey, I'm still calling you to you know, reach people, touch people, it just Mm -hmm. might look different. Um, which actually leads me to skip around a little bit to Donna Stewart, who said, bloom where you're planted, which I think that's really a great piece of advice because sometimes like 
you can't go to the location or you can't get out there and reach that place. But like, where are you planted and what can you do right where you're at? I think that that's been like special piece of advice for us here because we're in West Monroe and People always ask me, like, you know, different people we work with, oh, where are you based? And I say, oh, Louisiana. They're like, oh, really? You didn't, like, move to Nashville? You didn't go to L.A. or Dallas or Atlanta or whatever? And I'm like, oh, well, I did for a couple years, but then I came back. And they're like, oh, that's so cool. And I think it's just, like, different because most people, I think they think if I'm going to do something, like, big, I have to be in the big city. But then I think, like, I love where we live so much. And if everyone left who like had these like big desires for their city, then like where we're at would never blossom, you know? And so it's cool to see like so many people here and coming back here. Like I think about Cory Bar, who started like an amazing, two amazing restaurants, about to be three in our hometown. And I'm like, I'm so thankful that he bloomed where he was planted, you know, because mm -hmm. now people come to West Maryland, they're like, I can't believe you have restaurants like this. They're so good. And we're like, well, thank you, Cory Bar, for coming back and like blooming where you're planted. And so I think that goes for everyone. That's whether, you know, I obviously do like ministry stuff, but if the chefs didn't do that, if the restaurant owners, if the doctors, if the, you know, teachers, like if we didn't bloom where we were planted, then where we're at and where we love and our hometowns wouldn't have flourishing like they do, you know? So I think there is such a like itch these days to like move to the big city. Mm -hmm. And not that there's anything wrong with that. You got to bloom where you're planted there too. But there is something really beautiful about not underestimating what God can do where you're at, even if it looks insignificant. And that's what God did in the Bible over, I mean, a little town in Bethlehem, you know, like, it's like, that's what he does so often. That's so true. Bloom where you're planted. You can't bloom if you don't give it time. Boom. Can't bloom if you're not planted. That's true. But I was, but, but I was thinking like, you could be like a little sprout, but you gotta like full on blossom. It's true, it does take time. Yeah. We've, we had some friends say one time, I just, they were, they were moving around and looking for roots. And I remember sharing with them, you're not going to find roots. You got to grow roots. You know, you're not yeah, going to like move and find the root. Mm -hmm. You got to plant yourself and grow the root, you mm -hmm. know? And so, yes, be in the place that you're ready to grow the root in, but that's not something you find. It's something you grow. And I think for us, when we moved here, we were like, oh, wow, like this is actually harder than we thought. Um, just moving to a new place, even though I was from here, like you mentioned, everything kind of changes when you come back. But it's like, OK, let's start growing. And we did. And now we're seeing like blossom. We're blossom. seeing it blossom. We're seeing it's it really, bloom. really cool. A super bloom. OK, this is really a good piece of advice. Kind of on the same note, um, Earl McClellan said, don't let anyone else build your world for you. If they do, they will build it too small. Boom. It's good. Do you think, in y'all's own minds, do you think that y'all ever face that? Like someone building your world and building it too small? Are you thinking about your life and like shooting it too small for what God was going to do? It's okay if you didn't. Just wondering. It's a good question. Well, the first part, no. Because I've never like idolized someone to where it's like, that's like my whole mm -hmm. kind of, you know, framework kind of thing. But the second part, I mean, I feel like we all kind of deal with that to some extent of, um, yeah, whether it's questioning value or, or, or it's any kind of things like that of, yeah, like how much can God use use me or <clears throat> like is my, am I thinking too small? I think like there's the quote that's like, you know, we're never going to get to heaven and, you know, we ask too, or we ask God to do too much through us or something like that. I might be botching the quote. Um, but yeah, I think, I, I think we all, to some extent, I mean, I, I, <clears throat> I'm just kind of rambling, no, yeah, but sure. yeah, I think that we all can have a, like a smaller mm -hmm. grasp of that. I like what you said though, at the beginning, like I've never idolized what someone thought too much. Like you're like, no, because I don't, I wouldn't have thought because someone said that, that it really like landed on me. But I think a lot of people do like a lot of people let what people say about them. Speaking of blooming, like let it be a seed in their heart and that grows. And then they, they think less of themselves. They don't value them. So they don't think they can do all the things that God has for them or they underestimate what they can do. I mean, this person who wrote this letter to me, she was saying that how insignificant she felt, but yet at the beginning of her letter, she writes about who she is and she's a teacher and she's a grandma and she's a mom. And she's all these things. And like, 
well, that's not insignificant. You're teaching people. Like that's an incredible yeah. position to be in. You're setting an example for the students. You're a mom and a grandma. You have such influence in your kids' lives and the next generation. And so I think sometimes we downplay even the roles that we play, even to say insignificance would be, you know, if, if you think a mom or a grandma or a teacher is insignificant, then you're missing a huge amount of influence that you have. Um, someone's best piece of advice was, oh, I think it was Bethany Hamilton, yeah. She said, if you want to change the world, go love your family, which was the advice from Mother Teresa, which mom has in her bathroom, you know, above her mirror every day. She, my mom sees that. And I think my mom has been such a world changer by the way she's loved us. You know, she's done incredible other things to touch the world. But I think her first form of that was the way that she taught us and raised us to be. So nothing's insignificant. Nothing should be devalued. I was going to say on the on the quote. Read, read the quote about the world, the one you just read. Don't let anyone else build your world for you. If they do, they will build it too small. So I actually have, was thinking about a Mother Teresa quote for that one too, of when she said, and I'm botching the quote, but um, if it falls on your lot to be, a, to be a street sweeper, sweep the streets in a way that glorifies God hmm. or be the best sweet sweeper that they've ever seen. Yeah. And thinking about that of like, we all have, like bosses, right? We have people, most people. I mean, even if you work for yourself, you still are accountable to other people. Yeah. Um, but most people have, me, have someone that is a boss. They are creating the work that we're doing and telling mm -hmm. us what to do, right? So I think about that in regards to that quote of, of how do I make my own world whenever I have someone telling me what to do? Mm. And someone who's actually been really inspiring to me lately is I've been seeing this guy on Instagram like a ton on TikTok. He's the guy who he does the the pizza. I mean, he works for Papa John's and he like does all these crazy things with his pizza. And and he said the other day, like, I'm going to make the best pizza I possibly can. Wow. And he's like doing all the, you know, he's spinning in the air mm. and doing all these stuff. And he's just like an employee wow. and he's like, I'm going to do this to the best of my ability. Wow. And thinking about that of whatever our job is, whatever our boss is telling us to do, whatever lot we fall in, great. we still have the ability to create our own world. Like it's we're great. choosing to do this work We're whatever it is, we're choosing to go into work every day. We're choosing the work that we how we get to do the work that is given to us. That's so good. It makes me think of Elon Musk said about inventing the uh, Tesla. He was saying, I didn't think like, oh, I'm going to reinvent the car. He said, I wanted to invent the greatest car you've ever seen. So it's not like remaking the thing that's already made that's great. It's right. making what's already made better than it ever has been. Right. And I actually think about that with our team that you said that. So I technically, I guess, would be the boss, but I can only do... Um, like I can only pitch vision for LO as much as our team is able to do it, right? And I think about where we're at right now and we have such a great team. And I was, we had a meeting yesterday, it was a vision meeting for 2024. And I was throwing out all these ideas that I'm so excited about that just makes sense that are gonna just help reach so many more people and all these things. And I told them, I couldn't have done this before having you people on our team. Like the only reason I can create something like this is by thinking about your talents and your ability and your work ethic, knowing that you're actually going to be capable of doing it. And so it's so true when you step into a space and you're willing to give it your all and you're willing to say like, God, I'm going to do this for your glory. I'm going to use everything that you put in me um, to, to create or to work or to build or to grow. It really does. Like when you bring that with a team or you bring that with a business, it helps everything grow, helps everything flourish. But if you come and you're just like, ah, uh, you know, dragging your feet, you're hurting the whole team. You know, you always think, I think people always think like their insecurity and their lack of effort or laziness just affects them, but it always affects everyone around you. You know, your negativity, your insecurity, your this, your that. You think, oh, it's just affecting me and you're being miserable, but it affects everyone around you. So what a gift it is to show up positively. What a gift it is to show up ready to work and uh, give it your all and use the gifts that God has put on your life. Um, okay, we're running out of time. So let's see. Um, 
there's any others. Another podcast I just want to shout out from this year is Mia Fields. If you didn't listen to it, it was an incredible podcast. Um, again, great advice, but you really learned from the way she lived her life. So she was just telling a story about meeting her husband and believing for her husband and then believing for a baby. And the doctor literally said, you are not going to have a baby naturally. And she said, I'll call you when I'm pregnant. And two weeks later, she literally got pregnant, called the doctor like, hey, I'm pregnant. And it was such a God thing. Um, because they had been trying for a long time. She actually medically, like she had like a crazy tumor, got it removed to the point where she really should not have had a baby unless it was the Lord and the Lord uh, provided. And just the story is amazing. She had like an, she talks about having an evidence box of like evidence of uh, God's faithfulness. And she would like put things in her evidence box to remind her of his faithfulness when she doubted. Such a cool story. So go listen to Mia Fields if you didn't hear that one. Um, Lastly, I will end with this one, Jackie Hill Perry. Great podcast. Um, well, and Jason Mia. That that one just came out, mm-hmm. and that was one of uh, definitely fan favorite of the year. Might be one of the biggest ones. It just came out, though. Um, but it was incredible. You can learn so much from Mia's life and the way that Jace is as a father to her. Um, but Jackie Hill Perry said this in her devotional book, and we quoted it, the godly ask God questions. And it was from that verse, and this is just really stuck with me. It was from the verse, um, his ways are higher than our ways, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And she said, you know, when you think about that verse, that's a good verse. It's a cool verse. And I've said that verse so many times and just like a positive note. But she was like, if God's ways are higher than ours and his thoughts are higher than ours and his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts and you're being led by him, then you got to ask him questions because you don't understand his ways and you don't understand his thoughts and they're not your ways and they're not your thoughts. So you got to ask questions. Mm -hmm. And we talked about like the balance of asking God questions without accusing God, without questioning him in a doubtful way, but asking him questions questions in like a curiosity way and it was just such a good podcast it really helped me grow I think even in my like talking to the Lord and praying and asking God questions not on like a why aren't you doing this I don't understand blah blah blah, but more like a help me understand how do I react in this scenario how do I trust how do I have faith how do I live in this way because I don't understand it it's not what I would have done for myself. It's not what I would have thought for myself. Teach me how to think about it. Like that was such a cool thing. I don't know. I just learned a lot from that. Love that. I never thought about it like that. I know. Isn't that cool? Cool. So honestly, I just have to say this was a great year of Well That's Good. And I have learned so much. I think one of the reasons I love doing the Well That's Good podcast so much is because I genuinely get to learn every single time I get to interview someone. Every single conversation I have on the couch, I grow from. I love. It's helpful help shape me to be a better person. So just as you're growing and listening and loving it, just know I'm doing the same thing alongside of you. Every one of you that has sent a DM, I just want to thank you for comment. Thank you for um, whether you've given us a rating or shared it with a friend. We're so, so grateful. I hope to keep doing this for the next five plus years. It really is the my favorite thing. And I'm just so grateful for who it's made me become. And i um, so grateful for all of you for being so encouraging. Um, I always ask this, but I always say, leave in the comments, you know, what you want us to talk about next, who you want us to have on. If you have a question, if you have a piece of advice or a bad piece of advice you want us to talk through, please comment, please send it in. Um, your comments really do help drive this podcast. It helps the conversations that we have. When we see stuff that y'all are asking or working through or talking about, we note it, we jot it down, we think about it. And we actually want to speak to the problems that y'all are walking through and speak to the uh, seasons of life that y'all are in. So love y'all so much. Thank you so much for being a listener. And thanks, Jean-Luc and Christian for coming on the podcast. Of course.